Hello and welcome to our group project presentation on comparing the water quality of the Colo River to Cockle Creek. My name's Ben and my co-presenter will be Jack. Okay, so the, the research topic we chose for this project uh, is Aquatic Macroinvertebrate uh, Water Quality Survey. Um, the point of that is to discern the water quality based on the macroinvertebrates that we find during our uh, study. We'll then take the um, data acquired from, from both locations um, at Kola River and Cockle Creek and compare the, the two uh, waterways to compare the, the water quality, health um, and levels of pollutants that are possibly there. Um, both Jack and I uh, have a shared enjoyment for macroinvertebrates and, and water quality and waterways and the environment in general. I guess that's why we're both doing the, the unit. Uh, <laughs> um, we both have already shared our interest in the subject um, and excitement going out into the field and, and um, carrying out the work. Um, we both enjoy it thoroughly. Uh, we both understand the importance of water quality, especially here in Australia, where water is um, not abundant. Uh, with a growing population, that's becoming more obvious. Um, so water quality is very important, having access to clean, drinkable water um, for reasons of health and recreation, which is a huge thing here in Australia. Um, and both Jack and I also recognise the vital experience that this sort of work in this unit gives us both for future employment. Personally, um, working with Sydney Water would be uh, my idea for a future career. Um, so doing a project like this is very applicable uh, for my path and, um, and Jack, the path that he's on as well. Um, thoroughly enjoys the work and, um, and looking forward to continuing this, uh, this unit and this project. The key objectives, um, catch and identify aquatic macroinvertebrates to assess the water quality at both locations, um, at the sites we've selected, uh, up and down the, our, our respective waterways um, to give us an understanding of the water quality by taking the data collected of the macroinvertebrates that we've identified, analyzing the data, tabulating it, comparing it, uh, and then we can better understand the water quality of both sites uh, and also obviously compare the two. Uh, the scope of our work will be working at the, I'll be personally working at the Colo River location, uh, which is the Upper Colo, Central Colo and Colo East. I have maps later in the presentation, so does Jack. Um, the Cockle Creek location will be the Upper Centre and Lower Cockle Creek. Um, uh, initially, he was doing the Cowan catchment. However, access issues prevented Jack from getting to where he needed to be to take the samples. So we had to uh, redevise uh, the project um, and then reallocate his location where he can now access the three sites he needs to. At both sites, two samples, sorry, at both locations, there'll be three sites. And at each site, there'll be two samples taken um, by myself and Jack at our respective sites. Um, both of us will be traveling to and from the sites by car. All the equipment will be provided by ourselves. Um, the communication between us is entirely virtual. Um, Zoom chats, emails, and Facebook Messenger are the three main communication portals we use. Uh, and then we just coordinate um, our work through those, those portals. We also have a Google Doc, which we share information on. Uh, and obviously COVID restrictions, um, wearing masks whenever we, we travel outside, maintaining social distancing and staying within the five kilometer radius. So for part two, we are, we're gonna look at the methods and the action plan. So this is the equipment that we used in our study. Uh, firstly, we have the 215 micron sampling net used to collect each of the samples. This blue container here is the tray that I used uh, as a picking tray. Um, we put the samples in, we pulled the invertebrates out for identification. The sample container in the corner there um, is what I personally used. Um, I used it to take my samples off site um, and I'm sure Ben used something similar and it was just easier to have a 
spare containers just sitting around. Um, we got the gloves there that we use uh, for handling the invertebrates, um, also just for general hygiene as well. For identifying each of the invertebrates, we use the Water Watch sampling guide as well as the Water Bug app. Now for the methods, a uh, total of three sites were chosen for each of the water sources. Uh, these obviously being the Kola River and Cockle Creek. Uh, for Kola River, we labeled the sites Upper Kolo, Central Kolo, and Kolo East. And for Cockle Creek, these sites were labeled Upper Cockle Creek, Center Cockle Creek, and Lower Cockle Creek. Within each of these sites, there was a total of two samples were taken. So what we did is we chose to do a kick net sampling method. Um, this generally means that we put the net uh, flat on the, in the substrate of the water. Generally, it's better if the water's flowing, um, but it still works in still water. And what you do is you kick away from the net. Um, this pushes all the invertebrate samples out of the, out of the substrate um, and the water flow pushes them into the net. Um, generally, you should uh, dip the net back in after you've collected the sample. Um, this just removes all the extra sediment and substrate in the net. Um, and then you can put that in your picking tray uh, to pull out all the invertebrates. Or in my case, I put them in sample and containers and took them off site. Uh, to be identified. Uh, it's also good to check the net so no invertebrate samples have been stuck in the net. Um, and then once you're, in, um, once you're up to the identifying part, you, using gloves, you can uh, pull out all your invertebrates. Uh, I found it easier to put them into small containers or a lid, um, as you can see in those pictures there. Um, and that just helped with the identification. Um, and what you did is what, um, to identify them, we use the Water Watch sampling guide um, as well as the Water Bug app from the App Store. Um, and we recorded that into a table and that was shared between Ben and myself for further research. Uh, and then what you do is you repeat these steps for the other samples in the other locations. Uh, this is just the action plan. Um, we've done most of them here. Uh, for the 15th of September to the 30th of September, we're just going to collate our results from the, both the Kola River and Cockle Creek. Um, and comes to conclusions about the quality of water and what each of the invertebrate species uh, means for the quality of water. And we'll start preparing for the final seminar and report. Uh, this is just a Gantt, Gantt chart, um, just making that, summarizing all of that. Uh, so for part three, we're gonna look at the progress of work. Um, so I, I had to change, make some changes to my section of the study. Uh, originally, I was gonna sample Cowan Creek catchment and some of its surrounding creeks, uh, but due to some access issues and the size of the waterways, I decided just to focus on Cockle Creek. So on the 29th of August, I was actually able to get out and explore this creek and uh, have a look for any of the any good sampling sites, which I did find these three here in that map. Um, and obviously these two pictures here are just from the my first and second site so it just gives you a bit of a view of my uh locations um so on the 12th of september i started sampling um because of my sites were quite remote i actually chose to take my samples off site to identify them so this first picture here is the setup i used to identify my samples i transferred each sample into the picking tray and removed the invertebrates into a lid of another container uh, to identify them, which you can see down the bottom there. Uh, this table here is all the samples, invertebrate samples I was able to identify. Um, and I've uh, put them in as common name, species, order, and then the pollution tolerance level, uh, which was indicated by the Water Watch sampling guide. The sampling map I've included here are the three sites that I've selected uh, for sampling along the Colo River. I've already been to these sites, I've already collected my samples, so I know that they're good sites. The samples I've taken so far, I've ordered them into the three sites, uh, invertebrate categories, order, and pollution tolerance. 